All right, welcome to our new set here at Evo Gimbals. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do an unboxing of the GP Pro. When you open up your box, you are going to find that there are some really good detailed instructions with cool pictures and very easy to read and understand. So you're also gonna have your warranty card. You wanna go online and fill this out and that way we can uh, take care of you if you have any problems with your gimbal. In the box, you'll find your gimbal, the extension tube, battery charger, protection foam for your GoPro and the GoPro charge cords, a set of batteries, and a USB cord. When you get your batteries, they're gonna be charged to 30%. You wanna go ahead and put these in the charger, get them charged up. I have a pair right here that are already charged, and we're gonna go ahead and use those for this demonstration. This is your battery charger. When you have these, charged up completely there's a couple leds down here they're going to turn blue means that they're totally charged if this light is red then they need to charge a little bit more so leave them alone until they are fully charged pretty simple you've got your extension tube this little foam piece right here is actually pretty nice to be able to put on the top motor right here if your gopro is on here and it falls and it hits the motor down here it's not going to it's not going to scuff up the GoPro and it's not going to mess up your lens or anything like that. So it's just a little added protection. We'll go ahead and put the extension tube on so that we can put our large batteries in here. And these batteries by themselves, if you're just using this for the gimbal, will last for about four and a half to five hours. If you're using it pretty hard and you're charging your GoPro at the same time, it'll usually last for a little over two hours. Pretty simple, just like a flashlight. You put your batteries in, bump side first, tighten this stuff up. When you put the GoPro into this slide, that your lens is furthest away from the motor. That way you don't accidentally put it on upside down. You'll tighten these little gold screws down, just finger tight. Don't have to be crazy super tight. That's gonna hold it in there really well. And then we'll go back to this little plug on the bottom here and you have two of these little cables one has three wires and one has four wires if you have a gopro where you're using a backpack um, for the video or if you're using a silver you want to use the video plug that has the three wires not the four if you're using a black and you want to utilize the av port that's on the side here you want to use the plug that has the four wires. So for this one, because we're going to set it up with the AV plug, I'm going to go ahead and use the one with four wires. And that just simply plugs right in here on the bottom of the motor. And then you plug it into the side right here of your GoPro through the USB. When I power this on, everything, it, not only is my GoPro going to get a charge, but it's also going to send an audio video signal. So if you wanted to use this AV port, you can plug a monitor into it, kind of frame up your shots with your GoPro. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn on the gimbal. First thing to do is set it on something that's not moving. You don't wanna be in a car or a boat or anything like that, just to get it calibrated. So once you do that, you're gonna go ahead and hit the gold button right here. You're gonna see a little sequence of lights flash right there. That means that it's calibrated. The joystick will act just like a button. If you push it in, you'll feel it kind of click. And if you push it in and hold it, it'll activate your motors. So we've got the power on right now. So it's holding the calibration. So if you're going to be in a boat or a car or an airplane and you want to have that calibration, just leave it on like this. When you get in to the boat or the car and you're ready to shoot, just go ahead and hit your button, activate your motors. There you go. You got your calibration and you're using your gimbal however you want to use it while you're there. When you're done shooting and you want to put it back into that standby mode without turning off the power, just go ahead and push the button in, hold it for a couple seconds, and you'll see that the motors will stop working and it's back in the standby mode. This is really great for making your batteries last all day long when you're not shooting if you just do this. So you can see this blue light flashing here. What that's doing is it's giving me an idea of how much power my batteries have. So when it's flashing four times, it means I have 100%. When it's flashing three times, it means I have 75%. Two times means 50, one time means 25, and it's about time to charge your batteries. Now everything's working, and it's gonna default to the pan follow mode, which is probably what you'll use a lot, 90% of the time, I would say. 
It's very easy to use. It kind of it's kind of self-explanatory. It's just going to smooth out your shots. Um, it's going to keep your vertical very, very straight. If you want to move that vertical, you can go ahead and use your joystick to move the camera up and down. And then you can go ahead and click the button twice to go into the pan tilt follow mode. So what this will do is as I am moving the gimbal, it's going to kind of do the same thing as if I was using the joystick and it's going to tilt the camera down. So this is nice if you're following somebody down some stairs and you don't want to have to try to be really precise with the joystick. In this mode as well, you can go into the inverted mode and you can have it upside down. When it's upside down, you can go ahead and go back into the same thing, the pan follow mode by clicking the button one time. And now that puts us back into the pan follow mode. It's just upside down. The only way to get it flipped back over is to push the button twice and go into the pan tilt mode. So if we push this twice, you'll see that it'll follow and it'll come up and go back to this mode. So from the pan follow mode, if I click the button one time, it'll put me in a heading lock mode. So basically this is going to lock it in. If I'm going down a hall and I don't want any extra side to side movement with my camera, you can see it's going to lock into that position and hold that until I push the button again. And when I push it, it'll release it. Now it's back to the follow mode. This is really nice. If you are using your joystick, you can go ahead and lock it in. As you can see, I'm not able to turn it, but if you want to use your joystick to turn it, you can turn it to the left, to the right, and you can also pan up and down in this mode. And then to get back out of that mode, just press it one time again, and now you're back into the pan follow mode. There is a USB plug on the side here and we do have a wired remote so you can operate your modes and your tilt with that. So just a quick rundown, aluminum body, you've got a wired remote, you've got an AV out which is really nice, you've got a touch sensitive joystick so that you can control how fast your pan and tilt is. Uh, you got your different modes that you can shoot in as far as your pan follow, pan tilt follow, and your lock mode. These things are really durable. It's all aluminum. It's really well built. We've got some great accessories for it. Feel free to check those out. If you have any questions, go to evogimbals.com or give us a call. Thanks for your time. Have a good day.